to this video tutorial where I'm going to show you how to work the clover blossom. That's a very spe a special stitch that I designed specifically for the clear square. We have it in part four in the clear square. And this is what it looks like in the chart. So there are two ways to work the clover blossom, either with these legs here worked into a stitch behind which we have a DCBB so that this stitch stays free or the top loops of this stitch stay free or we work it in a front loop. So either we work a single crochet in the back loop here so that we have this front loop free or we could also work as a single crochet in the back loop of this stitch here so that would also give us the free front loop here. We're going to show you both versions and I've set up a little swatch where I created this situation here. So we are in this round already. So I had the stitch here, then I worked the DCBB in the next round and then I worked a single crochet in the back loop on either side of that DC BB. And here I worked a single crochet in the back loop only, which left me this front loop here. Then in the next round, which is this one, so in this round I worked a single crochet in the back loop, in this round I worked a back loop, single back loop, so that the three front loops are on either side of this free front loop. Okay, so let's just begin. I'm going to start here in that corner, which I haven't worked properly. I do apologize. I'm going to work until I am directly above this middle stitch here. So on this side of the swatch, I'll be working until I'm here. So I'm ending just before that single crochet here in the middle. Now I'm going to work that clover blossom. So you can see that the first leg and the second leg, they will both be worked in the same free front loop. The third leg and the fourth leg on both sides here, are also worked in the same front loop, just one round below. So here we go one, two rounds below, and in the middle we go one, two, three rounds below. So this stitch was made three rounds below this one here, where we're working now. Same here. And the first leg is a treble, you see that? It has those two bars. The second leg in the same front loop is worked as a double treble and this, that, this is all US terms. And the third and fourth leg are both triple trebles. So we are in over four times. And then we go back to the double treble with three yarn overs and then to the treble. And these two are worked in the same front loop again. So let's do that. So we start with a treble in the front loop of the stitch that is two rounds below. This front loop is part of this stitch that was made here. And looking at the swatch, that would be this front loop. So we leave that first leg unfinished. Now our second leg in the same front loop is going to be a double treble. So we've got the three times yarn over and we'll work it in the same front loop. Then the next two legs are worked in either that stitch, in this, on this side it's that stitch, on the next side it would be the free front loop. So we yarn over four times. And I'm just grabbing the top loops of this stitch here. 
one, two, three, and four, and again. Same stitch in the same top loops. So now, by now I've got five loops on the hook. And again, I'm yarning over three times only because now I'm working this stitch here. So I go into the front loop of the stitch that is two rounds below the next stitch. So this is always the next stitch. The stitch we're working is always the next stitch. One, two, three. And now the last is yarn over twice for the treble in the same front loop in which we made the fifth leg. One, two. So by now you should have two, four, six, seven loops on the hook. Now what we're going to do is we yarn over and pull through all of those loops and we also close it with a chain one. So now what's important is to skip only this one stitch that is behind the clover blossom we just made. And then we continue to work and I'm going to work single crochet in the next stitch. What happens then is that this clover blossom, blossom is getting um, three-dimensional. You can see that how how far it comes forward. If you want it a bit flatter, you can still just push it down, or you push it down this way later on. When you when you block it, if you block it, it will still be three-dimensional and have quite a good substance to it. So let's work it one more time. And now we're going to work in the front loop only. So I'm going to find my stitch, find my last stitch, which is the one before the stitch that is between those three front loops. You see here are those three front loops and this is where I'm going to make my clover blossom. So yarn over twice for the treble and I'm going one stitch back and two rounds below. One round below, two rounds below the next stitch. This is the next stitch, the stitch that replaces um, the working into this stitch. So we're not working into this stitch, we're replacing it with this clover blossom. There you go. One back, two down. Yarn over twice and pull through twice. We've got two loops on the hook. Now we work three yarn overs. We're going in the same free front loop. One, two, three times. Yarn over and pull through. Now we're going one, two, three, four times yarn over. And we're going in the next free front loop, which is one round below that one. So three rounds down. It's directly below the next stitch. One, two, three rounds down. We go one, two, three, and four. And we do the same thing again. Yarn over four times, same front loop. One, two, three, and four. Now we're going to the next free front loop. And we go one round up again and one stitch ahead of the next stitch. So that is where we find our next free front loop. One, two, and three. And our last, I'm sorry, I've got cat hair everywhere. And our last leg is yarn over twice for the treble, the same front loop as the last leg. And we go through one, two. So now we've got our seven loops on the hook, two, four, six, seven. So that's correct. We yarn over and pull through 
all of those seven loops and we close with a chain one. And then again, we only skip one stitch and we continue to work in the next. And that way we get a very plastic, very three dimensional stitch here. So that is how you work the clover blossom. So now we are in the next round after we made this clover blossom. I'm going to show you where to, or your options, how to continue after making this clover blossom. So there are several ways what you can do. First, I've, I've been working up until the stitch just before this clover blossom. And the next stitch that I could make is a DCBB in the top loops of the stitch that we skipped in the previous round. So that would be one option, just working a double crochet behind and below, actually two rounds below that clover blossom stitch, and then just continuing with um, single crochet or whatever you work afterwards. Another option would be to work in these loops, which are the normal loops of the clover blossom. Remember that the clover blossom has two loops. One is that what, what was on the hook before we worked this clover blossom. And the other, which is usually a bit smaller and a little bit tighter, is the closing chain. So if I'm going to work into the, the normal loop here, I have to make sure to skip this closing chain and continue in the next stitch. If I'm going to work into, well, let me just go back here. If I'm going to work, if I want to work into the closing chain, because it's, that's something that you like to do to make it a little bit tighter and to pull it to that side, you would have to skip the normal loops and just work into this closing chain. So that's another option. And the fourth option, and maybe you can come up with even more, the fourth option would be to work a front post single crochet. So you just insert your hook from front to back and then to front again, so that the hook is behind all those legs and you've got See those three bars here that are on top of the of the hook. So when you work that front post single crochet, or you could make a front post half double crochet if you want to, and then continue. So that would make this clover blossom a bit um but it would give the it would give him a tip, this um, stitch, and depending depending on the effect that you want to achieve, maybe this is what you want to go for. You know that clover is really it's really a tight tight um, tight flower that especially when it's a, a bud that's just about to blossom, then it's quite tight. So maybe. The front post single crochet is what you want to do, which is also the option that I went for here. Or maybe you just want to do the DCBB, very simple, in order to give the stitch a little bit more dimension and to push it a little bit f further forward. That would leave you the option to work into either or both of those top loops here later on in, a, in an even later round and maybe connect it or do even more with it. So there are several options how you can work this stitch or how you can work the round after this stitch. Just choose the one that you prefer and then you're good to go. And now that you know how to work it, I hope you incorporate it in your work. I hope it is helpful 
to crochet Claire when you see it in the chart, when you see this symbol in the chart here for the clover blossom or when you come across it in the description. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. That's always great to see that you get something out of these tutorials. Uh, and subscribe it's, it's a very cool thing. Then you get automatically notified when I upload another tutorial. And I will be working to make this in a PDF as well. And there will also be a website with a photo tutorial for this stitch. So enjoy and yeah. Let other people know about the Petronase, which is the Im image overlay crochet way of describing stitch placements. And I see you in one of the next tutorials or the next patterns. Take care.